This is one of the first jobs I kind of did on my own. When you could drive it up to Pismo, drive all day, stay at hotel, drive home. <laughs> So that's Stefan. Hey. Say hi. How's it going? Stefan's a pretty impressive character and he's a true OG. <laughs> and we're here in LA. We're actually at a special location, which would be Toretto's Market. More special is this. It's so good from every angle. So this is Stefan's Baja Bug. What year is that thing? 65. So this thing was originally garage built, I think out of like Cherry Valley. So let's go into the history of that. Nick. I think Nick, Nick Underwood was yeah. the builder of this car originally. I think from what I understand, it took him years to build. It was always his uh, passion project. He uh, got it together, did some amazing work with it. This is where I first saw it. New Order uh, LS Powered Bug is a world beater. He so did. that was before you owned it. I got it after he had built it. I took it out the first time, started driving it through the dunes, and it was just absolutely amazing. He did a great job, a uh, great job on the suspension, building the arms, and I thought he worked at a professional fab shop, but I guess uh, it's just his hobby. Yeah, so I spoke with Nick this morning just to get a, a little bit of history before Stefan owned it. Uh, and same kind of thing, it was his whole family was uh or still are baja bug enthusiasts and he wanted to just take his time on the thing and build it right he built it all in his garage uh, fully garage fab but you know it had a subaru originally and then he had the opportunity to sell his subaru engine and he just kind of overnight put a v8 in the thing uh, yeah, that was his yeah an ls1 with so a 2D. with a 2d transmission transaxle yeah We got so much traffic here. Everybody stopped by. Everybody, and yeah. cars, and loudness, and exhaust, so I think we're gonna refocus now and kind of start back at the foundation of this thing. When you picked this thing up, what was your intention with it? Uh, I was just gonna drive it and dune it, and then after I drove it, Nick did such a great job with the suspension and stuff, it was just amazing, just like one of you know, the higher dollar sand cars that I've owned. I was talking to my friend Rob, and we both like Porsches because they're functional and also they drive like a normal car. And, and we were talking about, well, maybe it's possible with a sand car. So um, that was kind of the idea. And uh, we took the body off and just basically cut everything through this section, including the shock towers, and kept the great front suspension, the great rear suspension. And we put a sequential transmission in it, um, an LS7 motor. Yeah. Uh, that's overbuilt, overbuilt axles, super strong transmission. It's a detuned motor, so it doesn't put out enough horsepower to hurt anything. And then on the on the inside, we try to just make it comfortable, uh, nice and normal with all the amenities. It's got a huge air conditioning system that works great. That's GPS. a vintage air system? Yeah, vintage air system. It's uh, the size they said they use for a Suburban. <laughs> Probably a Gen 4. Yeah, so we, yeah, yeah. So we used it. And, uh, there it yeah, is. Yeah, the GPS, the noise canceling headsets allow you to talk on the phone and they make, a, make it real quiet. It's pretty quiet without them, but definitely with them. And these are not just your normal PCI or rugged. These are a Bose system. And you said these were out of a... Jet? Yeah, we use them in uh, aircraft, yeah. That's what the 747 pilot's wearing. Yeah, and you guys can see everything in here is suede, and it's a full containment. So you can see the cage is revealed in here. And then you have, that looks like an aircraft uh, map light as well. It was just one that we found that we thought looked cool. Yeah. It works pretty good. And then the uh, different good. colors are the different light that it can produce. Yeah, if you want something that's not so harsh, you can dim it down and turn it blue or something for fun. Yeah, yeah. And so everything back here, this wall is ducting behind there for the cooler. So this scoop I built for Stefan uh, signed it. about a year ago. Got the signature right here. Yeah, Stefan went to Dumont.
never gonna wash it. I signed that thing. I think we might have to <laughs> re-sharpie it at some point. <laughs> This thing's gone through a transformation. You got it, you pulled the body off, so you know. You pull the body off and yeah. send it out for paint and uh, prep work to change the color, and then really just cut everything off from the pan. So it's just the skeleton of the front suspension. Yeah, the, this, the front rear chassis. So we changed the steering rack to a class one rack that was a much heavier duty rack. And then started mounting the stuff for the air conditioning unit, like the condenser that's right there and the air conditioning unit here. And then uh, brought the cage up. It used to have bars that you would have to jump over and we didn't want that. Yeah, we big old door be, bar. Yeah, we want it to be just easy, like a Honda Civic or something like that. So Bradley Nipper built all of the cage and components in here to withstand the abuse and still be open like this. And yep. it works really well. We got the big Mendiola, I think it's a 4, 4D sequential. Yeah, the um, sequential's huge. I wish we had pictures of it back behind that mesh in the panels, but it's, a, it's the biggest, baddest sequential you can get. And then we put bigger axles, bigger hubs. One of the big focus points is we didn't want to have any breakdowns, any problems. Just a great solid week of duning hard and not have a problem. So Big Bad John from Chatsworth built the, built the header system here with the exhaust canisters and we just wanted it to be quiet so it doesn't annoy people. And Yeah, the exhaust. So, I mean, you can see that how the headers route here. And then it goes up front and it does a really complex kind of X. It's a crossover system. Yeah. So they actually cross over. On so anyways. The market. Yeah, exactly. This motor is a 440 flat top from a CBM. And essentially what they do with this is they build a 1200 horsepower motor. And then instead of putting the blower on it that would give it the 1200 horsepower, you run no blower and it's about 700 crank horsepower, about 550 uh, wheel horsepower. And um, that's a really nice, reliable engine, which is one of the main focus points that we wanted. Sure. This thing lives kind of up at Evan's shop and Evan preps it yeah, and takes Eddie care WR, of it. Uh, yeah, All the guys there, Scott and Jeff and Kevin's working on this thing all the time just to keep <laughs> it perfect. And yeah. you can see all the wiring's perfect. Scott did all the... Um, all the body work on here and they really really got it dialed in the cooling was an issue right yeah cooling was an issue it was getting uh hot so we got a really nice oversized radiator and brushless fans and then uh morgan built this uh scoop and then you can't see the inside but it's absolutely incredible i mean it's hard to get it to run just at normal temperature now even on the hottest days you can dune as hard as you want to and uh still just be running the air conditioner running it as hard as you yeah. want it won't overheat which is real nice. And I knew that we were gonna come and do this, so I brought a T-handle to take the quarter turns off of this thing so you can see underneath and see the airflow and the inner workings um, of what's going on under that. Little small story on this thing too, is this is one of the first jobs I kind of did on my own. You had that vision, so we took a lot of time thinking about the shape on that thing, and even though it's a simple piece, there's so much time and thought going into the flow of, of that and the design language that it has, you know, for the car. So many angles. Yeah. What and made it you? Need body work. That's one of the coolest parts about it. Yeah. <laughs> no body work. Yeah, you wanted to keep it raw, which is cool. It shines really good in the reflections. What made you do the paint like this? When I was a kid, people had the Volkswagen Manx and uh, some of the old fiberglass cars. Yeah. And I always thought it was cool how they had the bass boat flake on them. So we said, hey, why not? It looks like fun. So. The whole proportion of this thing with 37 inch projects, you know, and, and the methods and just, you know, it still retains its short wheelbase and it still has like a class one style track width to it. You know, coil over bypass in the rear. Chrome. Yep, the tram. <laughs> Back to chrome molding. And the whole package wow. is just so interesting and awesome to look at. It's, it's something you'd want to have, you know, next to a poster of an exotic car in your room or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and a lot of the guys that are into cars or whatever will go to the meets where there's a lot of Lambos and Ferraris and stuff and they always enjoy it. Yeah. You know. And you take it to those meets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll yep. cruise by and go check out some cars and uh, yeah, people trip out on it. What's it's fun because you could just, you know, you could just drive it to work. You can drive it anywhere you want on the street. So I go out to Glamis and the dune season is in the winter time. So it's kind of neat to be able to enjoy your car during the summertime. You know, and you could drive it up to Pismo, drive all day, stay at a hotel, drive home. What's so, the longest trip you've logged on this thing? Uh, as far as how many days out using just it? Just miles, like on the street. In one day? Yeah. 
Oh, maybe a little less than 200. Okay. Yeah, I have a, a you know regular driving car that I usually drive, so. But um, I, I'll drive it to work and back and stuff. Well, that's the thing with Stefan is sometimes he'll come to the shop and he'll pick this thing up and then he'll disappear for a week or something and it'll be his car that he's driving every day. Yeah, open the garage and there's the big bug eyes. We're getting a lot more attention than we thought. We're gonna do some roller shots on the freeway and then go through downtown LA. 